Sanbonani, Molweni Dumelang, Absheni, Dalo Chani, Eda Ola, and welcome to another exciting episode of Law and Faith hosted by myself, Buiselo Villagaza. This is a platform where lawyers and aspiring lawyers share their stories of hope, how they've been able to overcome adversity, how they've been able to overcome greatest life headless through their faith. On today's episode, the central theme is patience and resilience. International Pastor um, Joyce Meyer once said, I quote, patience is not simply the ability to wait. It is how we behave while we are waiting. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that with those words, or rather those words do embody the journey of our guest today. And uh, carrying both these virtues, the virtue of patience and the virtue of resilience. And his journey has not been an easy one. He is... Um, Ladies and gentlemen, an alumni from the University of Zululand, where he did his LLB degree, and he's an admitted attorney of the High Court. I can't go uh, further than that, but he is doing amazing things, and you know he is in he he is in his meteoric rise, you know, to success. So help me welcome especially Njoaha. <laughs> welcome, brother. Uh, okay. Greetings, greetings to you, Muiselo, and our our viewers as well. Greetings, God is good. God is good, man. All the time, God is good. all the time. How how how, all the how, time. how are you doing? How is your day today? Um, uh, you know, today is a Sunday. My day was nice. I was at work working overtime. Now I'm recording. After the recording, I'm heading to Deben. Uh, tomorrow I've got a meeting with Department of Justice. Um, it's going to be busy. I'm living, you know, a busy life. Yeah. You know, <laughs> life of an artist. Yeah. yeah you are a jet setter. You're constantly traveling and, you know, working very hard. And I, I really, really admire your work ethic. You're one person, like, um, in the middle of the night who'd say, you know, I'm busy studying right now. So I really like that about you. So my brother, yes, I know you, but there are people out there who are watching on YouTube or be it listening on, on Spotify or on Apple Podcast or in any platform that they may be listening or, you know, um, watching, but they do not know who you are. Please kindly introduce yourself and give us a little bit background of who you are and where you come from. Well, uh, my name is Sipen Sihle. I'm an admitted legal practitioner of the High Court. Uh, currently, I'm working for the Road Accident Fund. Um, but already, I'm doing some things to, to expand already. As I've mentioned, tomorrow I'll be with Department of Justice. Then the day after that, I'll be writing my notary exam. After that, I'll be with the Road Traffic Infringement Agency. Um, and then um, by next week, I'll be with the NPA. I'm, I'm expanding, you know, I've not limited myself. Mm-hmm. So I'm a, I'm a claims player. I'm trying to go big. Yeah, so I uh, okay, that's what I do. But also what is more important is I'm a, I'm a child of God. Uh, I, devoted, I devote my life to, to Christ. Uh, I'm a born again Christian. And Yam Tan Luches, he saved my life. <laughs> yeah. And, yeah. Mm. I, and, I wouldn't be here if it wasn't for his mercy and grace. Most definitely, most definitely. And sometimes um we are often like apologetic. I don't know why people are apologetic about you know their faith and all of that, but it I always um, I'm always, you know, happy when I see like people who are unapologetic about their faith and all of that, because the culture um, that we are living in is all about, no, 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 you know, uh, you know, try by all means to, to not speak about your faith and whatnot. Um, so where do you come from, man? Like, and how did you grow up? You know, you know, please take me through. Uh, where I come from, um, I mean, I, I come from. I was born in the slums. I, I was born in Lazi, F section. In the, they call it Ekeza. In nowadays, it's a place where you can um, correlate it with uh, your, your kukulit, 
Ekukulit, mm. Alexandra. Mm. But now, today, it's, it's more of RTP like, there are more RTPs, but back then it was all slums, man. Those one room shacks, uh, yeah, it was like that when I grew up. When I grew up, uh, it was enough with gangsterism, um, high, you know, ca- ca- hijackers. Uh, and then I, that's where I attended my my primary schools. I went f- to Ndwela Primary School and then uh, for a senior primary, I then went to Manyoswa. And uh, yeah, that's where I spent most of my time. That, that's where I learned. I learned to write my name. Uh, yeah, Mlas F section. But as we grew older, my mom uh, decided this place is not good for for raising my children. I have to find a better place. That's where my my parents decided to move to Elovu. Uh, yeah, Elovu. They just moved to Elovu. That's where that, that that's where um I went to uh. Told me in primary school from grade six to grade seven. Then later on, I went to Adams College. From Adams College, uh, I then decided to do engineering at Mangosu too. And also, I went to a what we call there's this Tibet College, man. And they call it Coastal College. Mm-hmm. Then after that, I went to University of Zululand. And then law school, and then I became an attorney. So that was my background. Growing up um, in the slums, né, um, we were living so poor. Uh, we were so poor. In such a way, as a child, you know, you'll, you'll have questions. You'll ask your mom, mom, why is it that you are so poor? Why is it that we don't have a car? We don't have a proper house. And then you'll see uh, from television, generations people are wearing suits they they are holding keys they're talking business uh, they're wearing nice they're eating nice they have a nice furniture then i'll go to my mom mom why are we not living like this why is it that you are living in a small house we don't have such furniture we don't have luxury and my mom will tell me see it's because i did not go to school if people who don't go to school they don't have a chance to enjoy these luxuries they end up here being poor, living this life. And, and uh, I didn't like that life to such a point where I decided. And my mom will tell me that I have to focus on my school, respect my teachers, do my homework. That's how I'm going to be able not to live in poverty when I'm adult. So by that, she leveled, um, she, she put that, uh, that energy to love my schoolwork, to dedicate my life to my school for a better life. So that's how I came about. My mom is the one who, who raised me that way to instill the education in order to combat poverty. Mm. So for me, going to school, it wasn't just the sake of teaching and learning. For me, it was a, a chance, a weapon to battle and fight against poverty. And mm-hmm. also, my friend, I was raised by a sing, my single mom. So from a young age, it was very evident that should I lose my mom, I won't be able or I won't afford to stay in school. So with the limited time, in my mind, I thought I had. I had to give my all, my best. Thus, now, as you can see, I'm the, I'm young, you know, but I'm already m- making moves because I was brought like this to say there's no enough time. You can lose anyone who's supporting you, and more especially, I I, 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 my mom, alone. So every time I, I get to school, I make it a point that I get my grades right. I do uh, things accordingly so that I can progress to the next level because I don't know what the future holds. Mm. So that is my background. Mm. And mm. also another thing that is very important in the slums, we couldn't, we couldn't afford, uh, our parents couldn't afford to buy us toys. So we had to create our own. Uh, I remember we had our own kites. 
we, we, we used to have, you know, bricks. We visualize bricks as motor vehicle, like as as motor as motor toys, mm. motor vehicle toys. Uh, uh, yeah. Um, we'll play uh different types of self-made toys. Again, that uh, helped me a lot in life in such a way that when I'm faced with obstacles, I'm able to rely on my creativity. You know, instead of making excuses, you know, of which. I, I, I will I will I will reflect on that later on as we proceed with the interview of how growing in the slums helped me uh, to be more creative when I'm faced with unfortunate events or obstacles. How I uh, how I maneuver through them. Mm-hmm. Um, I, 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 the that point is growing up in the slums in the in, in a poverty environment. It also means that in the whole neighborhood. If you want to pursue your success through school, you have no role model because mm. there's no way in a, in a, in a such environment you'll find a professional like a teacher, a doctor, or a nurse. So you are tapping in an unknown world, a world that has never been attempted by even your forefathers, your, your, your children, and I mean your, your, your uncles, or anyone else in your family or in your vicinity. You know, so you are you are you are tapping in an unknown world. Mm. So you'll face a lot of criticism, mm. a lot of a lot of hate, because you know in the slums, most people you know we don't resort to uh, to uh, to long term rewards. We want instant rewards because we are trying to survive. So and here true, I am. Man. I'm t- mm. I'm t- I, I, I took law, which is a part which is take very long. You know, so there was a lot of uncertainty and negativity around it you know not because maybe it's because it's me but it's because of the environment it's an unknown world that i was venturing into so um growing up in the hood also means that you don't have connections Mm -hmm. your parents don't know certain kind of people so you'll have to work extremely harder than your 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 colleagues in Mm -hmm. order to make it you had to be more, more, and more creative, uh, so that you can give the, those people a reason to give you a chance. Mm. You know, because nowadays, man, if 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 you, you are not connected or your parents don't know certain individuals, it, it's gonna be hard. Mm. So, I mean, I, I had to be, be, be very creative and understand well, this is where I'm from, and then this is how I'm gonna maneuver, of which I'm gonna share later as you proceed with that yes 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 um so so sorry to interject but thank you for 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 that i want us to proceed to uh to another question and you know um i'm i'm really happy that you've just um shared about your background and wow you know while you're speaking i'm thinking you know as someone who may be watching and probably they've imposed their background as some sort of a barrier or limitation now they are thinking that okay if someone like this could is able to 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 make something out of himself, you know, um, what is then hindering me, you know, from doing the same with my life, you know? So I'm I'm really inspired by that. Then then tell me then what prompted you to study law? I'd like to believe, um, you know, but then what prompted you to study law and take me, you know, through that journey, you know, um gay we of the law um did you have a bursary and how was the financial situation thank you so much for the question um i'll be very honest with you coming from where i'm from you know we don't know the language of passion of of having a vision it's all about survival i studied law for the for the poor i mean for the on the basis of 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 getting rich you know help my family out of poverty break the, 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 the poverty line in the family, start generational wealth. And also, man, uh, when you're growing up in the slums, poor, you know, you have less friends, you know, um, you want to make a name for yourself, you know. I, when I wanted to choose a career, you know, I in my in my mind, I had it that I'm smart, I'm, I'm getting good grades, I can be whatever I want to be. And, you know, it happened that I wanted either to become a doctor a lawyer or um, an engineer, you know, I had those three because those one will, at that time in my mind will afford you the, the, the life you desire mm. and the life uh, that will get you out of poverty 
allows people to give you a good name. So now, you know, you, just, you start being respected because, you know, growing up, man, I was called with different names, you know, those names that, that, regarding to my, my, my skinny body and stuff. So I wanted that to change. I wanted to, to people now to see, to call me a counselor, to call me a doctor, to call mm, me mm, a mm. junior. I don't wanna lie, bro. Those are the things that you know I I wanted, and uh, knowing that I get good grades, I wanted to capitalize on that and change my life. I wanted to boss my life. Uh, uh, one, I'll be getting a chance to improve my social status at the same time. I'm providing for my family, a food family, to say, um, yeah, we have such a father. They'll be proud of me. So I knew that you know I needed a. Uh, 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 that kind of a of of, of a career solo uh, became one of the options uh, initially, but now as time goes on, I'm growing, I'm maturing. I discovered that I I, I had passion for it. Uh, to prove that I had passion, I started doing voluntary services, and officially I'm still part of. I just uh, been approached by probono.org to volunteer. I'm, I'm passionate. It's not all, now. It's no longer about money, you know. As as I grew, I I I asked myself, you know, I I thought to myself that there should be a divine purpose for God for allowing me to be mm. to be able to do such things, yeah, one, to be mm. able to think differently, to want to able to have this desire to better myself. There must be a divine purpose rather than you know surviving. Yeah security and, and social status and all that there must be a divine purpose then um when I I, I I i when i realized things are you know in that regard and then i started to see things in a different light of which now i believe that god has a purpose you know that's why i started i i started uh, to volunteer yeah, yeah, and stuff um okay uh th- that is the reason or um i uh, initially i started to do law office now i am passionate about it i I can even do it like for free now Mm. you know because i love helping people Mm. and uh, okay that's uh, yeah that is the point the first point i I, um can you please maybe repeat on the other questions thank you Uh, for 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 your honesty um i just wanted to find out also um about any challenges that you faced when you're going to tertiary now um and um to study you know um any challenges that you recall you know it, it, while at tertiary okay okay my friend um at tertiary uh you know uh ish uh i don't know i i did have uh, challenges in terms of money uh, you know what happened was my mom decided to say Okay, because now you're in Tessia, it's fine. We can, I, I don't mind going on an empty stomach, you know. He, she took that risk to say, I, I don't mind um, as long as you are you're getting educated. Um, first year, I applied for NFSAS, of which uh, I, I got the second year. But during the first year, my mom said, it's fine, we can go hungry. You know, though that sacrifice, man, yeah, that sacrifice of my mom saying that and actually doing that, mm. uh, it, the one that gave me courage, you know, to say when I when I'm in varsity to say my mom, you know, sacrifice the Lord. When I, while I'm here, I have to make it, like I have to make it. I have to succeed, you know. Mm-hmm. I, I, I didn't have time to go and party. I didn't have time to do uh, things. Now, now I, mean, I believe which I also have to do uh, to take a sex, uh, sacrifices on my on my on my behalf because mom has done so. And then when I got to Basari, I mean the NFS uh, the following year. I don't know why, but my mom decided no. Um, I will keep. I, I will keep on. Uh, sacrificing my mom they say that no let's let not uh, let's do away with nf sas mm. i'll keep on uh i'll keep on uh paying for your private your, your your fees by myself that's what my mom said i don't know why maybe i think she saw how dedicated i was how hardworking i was because now i was using her at 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 end money and also my friend knowing that i'm, I'm raised by my mom 
uh, and I know if I lose her, my life will, will be in deficit. That, that again gave me, you know, the energy to work hard, uh, to work hard. It was, I, I didn't know when can I lose her. And if I lose her, that would be a, a tragedy. And I didn't want that. So I worked hard. Up until I received a bursary from law society. There was law society bursaries. I don't know how, how what they call them, I've forgotten, but back then we, the Crisis Council was called Law Society and it had the bursary scheme of which ended up uh, paying for my tuition fees. Mm. So that was my uh, my challenge during uh, varsity. Mm. Then after varsity now, that's where you have to go and find your articles, your, your law school, um, you know, again, coming from such a humble background, people will expect, even my mom will expect now that I will go and find a job and help her in the household. Only to the surprise that now I was facing unemployment, the virtue of being, you know, unemployed after my LLP. Um, I was called for for interviews, man, in 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 big law in, in big law firms and stuff. But now, when I got there, né, they required you to have your own vehicle, a own driver's license, you know. So for me, coming from that in a background, you know, in poor background, I couldn't afford. I couldn't afford to have none of those. Mm-hmm. I couldn't have. I I couldn't afford to have my own vehicle, my own driver's license. So mm-hmm. it was hard for me to, to get to get articles mm-hmm. because of that nature. So what remember I'm from the slums. I'm coming from making my own toys. I had to be creative. Then I came up with this idea to say now, because I do not have an own vehicle, I do not have a, a driver's license. I'll come up with a plan to say now. I will volunteer. I will do my my articles free, without getting a remuneration out of it, and then the strategy works. So immediately I started to, to get my articles, but now as much as I was doing my articles, the challenge was still there. We were still poor at home. At home, my mom will still have to take care of me. It means that my basic needs, my mom still had to cover. So imagine when you graduate, you are 25, 24, you're still depending on your mom. Mm-hmm. It means that, yeah, my mom was the one also who was paying for transport. And mm-hmm. it wasn't easy for her because in some cases, when I go to her and ask for transport money to go and volunteer for my articles, sometimes out of range, she will speak some weight of, of which was very harsh. Sometimes she will have, you know, people, people telling him that, you know, this thing of Sihe is doing, it. he thought he, he was better than anyone. Mm-hmm. He decided to tap into unknown well, thinking that somehow he's God. He should just lower himself and consider other options, such as going to work at speak and pay or be, be, become a security like all of us, mm-hmm. you know, or do a PGCE training mm. for that matter. But here he is, Arok, and he is he's still pursuing these things of which do not benefit him in any way. Again, my brother, it was hard for me to get articles. Most people were getting articles, you know, uh, during those days also, where people that were, were, were familiar with lawyers, you find that they, their fathers or their aunties are lawyers, so it was easy for them to get such opportunity. But for me, I did not have any uh, people I know, any of my background is a lawyer or a professional. So no one actually knew lawyers in my in my family. And also the interviews that I was getting, I did not have a car, I did not have a, a, a license. So I had to improvise and say, uh, I will do my articles voluntarily, of which, um, again, I got the opportunity, I did my articles. So when I was doing my articles, knowing that my mom, you know, is helping me, but she, she, but 
you know, she's just doing it for the sake of, you know, seeing me, you know, doing well, progressing with life. But knowingly that's in her heart, it, it's paining, it's paining her. Again, my friend, that also gave me the motivation to give my all, mm. to say, I want to achieve this. I want to be successful. And the end of the day, these people who are speaking ill about me, telling her that she's just wasting her money on me, someday they will regret. Because, man, I believe that every day of our lives, we, like, we are writing a chapter. Our, our lives is like we are writing a book. It's a chapter each and every day. So it's up to us as an individual of how you want that book of yours to end. You want it to end in shame, in a cloud of shame, or you want it to end in a cloud of glory. So I chose the latter to say, I'll give my all. I'll make sure this lot of things works. And okay, I, I could see people who were go, go, going through the same. They were taking other options. They were doing PGCEs, changing, uh, you know, running away uh, from those challenges. But you know, I tell myself, you know, I've suffered a lot of trouble because of this law. I surely have to make it out of it. I have to uh, succeed in it because I've faced so many challenges already. So I, I cannot... Uh, choose alternatives. I had I had to make it work, you know. I turned that pain into passion. And remember, you know, when you are you are, you are applying for articles, you have to have your CVs. You have to go to a law firm. You submit your CVs. But for me, I was so poor, I couldn't afford. You know what I did? I had posters. Uh, you know those posters that you put in court to say can it be available. I used those. I mean, it was uh, the law firms calling me because I couldn't afford to make CVs, travel, you know, transport, go from law firm on the notice board in the court to say I'm looking for articles. So I was, I was creative, man, in that sense. And also, in the growing up poor and out doing law, you don't have access to information. I didn't know what I mean. A, with LLP alone, you can find a good job, you know. And that helped me because if I should have discovered, I would, I would, I would, I would, I would I could have discontinued uh, trying to find articles. But I didn't know what mean you can get a job. I thought maybe my only option was to um, to become self-employed. So I went, uh, yeah, um, I pursued, I pursued, um, uh, articles, admission, you know, trying to, so that I can start my own firm and, and all of that. Um, but later on, I discovered you can you, you, you can actually get employed. And then, um, and then when I discovered it took only one application, one interview, it landed me at Road Resident Fund. Uh, yeah. Um, yeah, man. So I, yeah, I'm self-made like that, man. No, I get, no, I, get no I get, I get, I get you. And thank you, man. You, you've just said, you've yeah. said a mouthful. And um, I always want to give, uh, you know, my guests, um, you know, enough time to to express themselves because we mm. do not know someone is watching who may really need this interview. Um, I remember when you know mm. uh, when I got this vision of of studying law and faith. You know, um, something said some people's lives would be changed. You know, through the, such a platform that you are starting. And while you are speaking, I'm thinking. Wow, this is what you know. God spoke about to me that when you start, people think you know because um, lawyers, um, you know, we uh, I, I just you know I, I just big people. They do not um, uh, experience um, challenges. You know, we call it in English the, the upper echelon. You know, they they do not um, experience challenges, but yet you know you did not have an easy journey. Um, in closing, my yeah. brother, I uh, rather before um, just I think it's two questions before now we close. Number one, how did your faith um, sustain you, you know, throughout everything? How has your faith sustained you? Any scripture that you can make reference or song that gave you hope and restored your faith during those times? What, you know, how did your faith, you know, help you to overcome during that time? My friend, there's a, a, a prayer that we used to recite every time we were in school. Uh, Psalms 23. O Jehovah, my Luswam, 
angiwesela mm. uya ngilalisa emadlena hlaza you know uya ngihola yeah. okay um emadlena hlaza you know the verse two men that says he leads me into green pastures mm. you know that's that's my favorite he, it says he leads me to the into the green pastures mm. in other words when i was i was in that process of being unfortunate and disadvantaged mm. i had it in my mind that he is leading me it's the process he is leading me as much as i'm not there yet he is leading me into the green pastures i always have that in heart that everything work good for those who are in christ it's a process i i i i took it as as a process that is a process of him leading me you know um i shall i i shall i shall lack not um so little way simply it 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 gave me courage that he is leading me into green pastures even now I, I I still believe that I'm though I I I I'm in the green pastures, but I believe that he is still leading me. And also, when I was facing rejections, you know, uh, people don't want to help me. People hanging their phones. People promise uh, making empty promises. You know, don't want to help me. You know, I had it in my heart that okay, it's God now giving me the idea that um, he. He wanted to show me that he is God because now I, I, I can boldly tell you, I can boldly tell you, my friend, that everything that I've, I've achieved, it's God. There is no man. There is no connection. There is no help. There is no, the, 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 the zero. Zero. There is no one who can say they, they made me. I'm, I'm not breaking. I'm, I'm just breaking about God. There is no man. Should, now, when I think back, should if anyone helped me, you know made, made it easy for me it would be hard for me to praise god today so i have it would see it was god showing himself you know you remember the story of far of faro and the, the 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 people of israel the bible says god hardened the heart of faro for him to let the israelites go out of egypt sometimes it's not the devil who hardens people's hearts Sometimes it's not the devil who, who make those people not uh, wanting to help you. Sometimes mm. it's God. Mm. He, hardened, he hardened the heart of Pharaoh so that he can show himself that he is God. Let's, let, let, let's for instance, imagine if Pharaoh, his heart was not hardened and he could have let uh, uh, those people go, uh, go mm. freely. Mm. There wouldn't be a separation of waters, the, mm. the, you know, they wouldn't see God uh, bringing those uh, tribulations into Egypt, those mosquitoes and frogs and, and all of that. So sometimes God had hardens the heart of Pharaoh so that you can see that he's God. So I, yeah, I, I think it was imperative for God to harden the, peop- the people's heart not to help me. So that at the end of the day, I'll be able to say I'm here because of God. Mm. and not because of men mm. those are the things and also um my favorite scripture is the life of joseph you know the life of joseph and mine uh is 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 almost uh, i can relate to him he was betrayed by his friends sold to slavery by his i mean brothers i mean um and, and today he landed in egypt you know, I had this thing in my heart that if you have a vision, nothing can stop you. They can sell you, they can put you in the dungeon, but your vision will take you out of the dungeon. Your vision will put you in place, in big places. And when you got there, like Joseph, you shouldn't show hatred to those people that were putting through uh, those uh, uh, occurrences or those circumstances. Mm. Give them food and let them eat, mm. just like Joseph did. Yeah, so Vince. those are the scriptures which which made me. Mm, Vince, thank you so much. You've 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 said you know um, 
a lot of beautiful yeah, things. Yeah, and, and about the songs, man. About the, about the song. People are going to be by Babo. Yeah. Babo. Cycling. Tikom Kululi. I saw it. Repeat. Tikom Kululi by Babo. I did one. Uh, that's when I I I, I played uh, on repeat. Uti le la tu long fe tu uti. Beng beng ngeke kwenze ke lo koko kwenze ke pilo niya. Uba wena ukabanga pilo ya. Hmm. Is kala ebes ebes bego lo mina sapugi le. Hmm. That might believe he poverty. Begu is kala that was put against me. Yes. I get to sapugi le fe tu. Eh, meng buga. I bank account in a shuku tie, Sapugil and Bua, you see the car. I spugil, spugil, and the source car in Fuerte Poverty, spugil, and the Gizam Ukotazo, Muntu, or we unemployment, or the degree alone, they are born with it. Nay, if I can, I he so, or she can for it. So Pugis Kali. Without connections, without handouts, so Pugis Kali, for it was Pugit Mina, Nagena, so pool. So pool. Yes, man, yes. Yo. Uh, yeah, thank so you. yeah, no, thank you so much for sharing your story, man. Um, yo, and another thing, you are very funny, like <laughs> you, 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 then you always make me laugh in a, in a way, in a motivational way. But I always, I always find myself laughing when you are speaking because you do em, like emphasis and whatnot, you know. I've got three qu- surprise questions, and you have to answer them. Mm. Um, each question, you need to answer it in 10 seconds, man. So I'm giving you right, two seconds to answer that question. All right. The first question is, yes. what is faith? Uh, faith um, is is believing in God, man. Whatever is you are going through, God has a purpose for your life. God has a purpose for you. That is faith for me. Thank you. God has a purpose. There's a divine purpose. Yeah. Yes, yes. What, who is God in 10 seconds to you? God is a friend. God is um, a father to the fatherless. God is the mother to the motherless. God is a, is a brother. God is love. God is love. God, God is, is love. love. I love that. I love that. And then in 10 seconds, um, obviously, we are not guaranteed just to live forever on earth. But if if one day you depart this earth, in 10 seconds, I want to be remembered as a selfless leader, a person who paved the way. A person who inspired uh, people to do good and to see good in themselves. A, pe- a person who, who volunteers who likes to help people. Yes, sir. Thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for um, you know sacrificing your time. Um, we record on Sundays um, and, and other times, you know. But you, you would keep and Amanda bus to even on a Sunday, and you work very hard, man. Thank you so much. Um, good to you. We're able to touch this katsako. Gang, I pray. You know, I really, really pray that to, maybe even if it's one person's life who's changed by just listening to this podcast or watching on YouTube, I just pray for that. You know, um, please hit the subscribe button, follow, share this podcast. Now, abanyo abangasiba benefits. Like, yo, we can't let this content eganje ne powerful ganje na iti go to waste. God bless you. God bless you. Thank you.